This is the story of the wild journey of a one-off Elvis recording, the first he ever recorded, and how it landed in the hands of none other than Jack White. It's a fascinating one, from the history of the recording itself to the stunning anonymous at-auction purchase by White in 2015. But one of my favorite parts is what came after. You'll definitely want to stick around for that. Welcome to Poetic Wax. I'm your host, Andy Fenstermaker, and I bring stories from the history of bands, albums, and songs within my record collection every single week. Today, we are looking at the story of the first Elvis record, which I don't have. But I do have quite a bit of Jack White. We're going to explore the story anyway, the first Elvis record. To begin the story, we have to go back about 70 years. It was 1953, and a young man in his late teens walked into Sun Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. He had no recording contract. He paid for the session out of his own pocket with borrowed money, and we'll get to that. On that day in 1953, July 18 to be quite precise, Elvis had a goal in mind. It was to catch the eye of Sun Records owner, Sam Phillips. But he lacked the confidence to request an audition, so instead he put a slightly different plan into motion. Elvis, who was 18 at the time, would pretend that the reason for booking this session was to record a birthday gift for his mother. How sweet. With only his guitar in hand and no backing band to accompany him, he chose My Happiness, a pop standard at the time, for the A-side. And for the B, it was That's When Your Heartache Begins. He was working for Crown Electric. I'd seen the truck go back and forth outside, and I thought, they sure are doing a hell of a lot of business around here. But I never saw it stop anywhere, so he had cased the joint a long time before he stopped the truck and got out. And there's no telling how many days and nights behind the wheel he was figuring out some way to come in and make a record without saying, Mr. Phillips, would you audition me? So his mother's birthday gave him the opportunity to come in and make a personal record. That was Phillips in a Rolling Stone article in 1985. What stood out to Phillips at the time wasn't necessarily the music, though. It was... Elvis's sideburns. There wasn't anything striking about Elvis except his sideburns were down to here, which I kind of thought, well, you know, that's pretty cool, man. Ain't nobody else got them that damn long. We talked in the studio, and I played the record back for him in the control room on the little crystal turntable, and walked up front and told Marion to write down Elvis's name and number and how we could get a hold of him. In a career filled with bad decisions, just, I mean, just look at the hiring of his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, for one of the most notorious. This $4 session was easily the best business decision Elvis ever made. The auction. My Happiness was never released as a single, but it did convince Phillips to sign him to Sun's roster. Ultimately, at some point, the one-off acetate record found its way to Elvis's friend, Ed Leak, where it stayed until 2015. See, it was Leak that gave Elvis the $4 for the recording session, so Elvis felt it proper to give Leak that record. Elvis was just another guy off the street who wanted a career in music at the time. And as Rolling Stone noted in an article in 2015, he inherited the disc when Presley, whose family didn't actually own a record player, left it behind at his home. At some point, it was then inherited by Neek's daughter, who put it up for auction, though some reports listed as Leek's niece. Or maybe it went to the daughter and then the niece. Either way, it stayed within Leek's family. So the date was January 8, 2015 what would have been Elvis's 80th birthday. Here's a quote in a different article from Rolling Stone. The 80th birthday celebration found hundreds of fans flocking to Graceland, where they joined the singer's former wife, Priscilla, their daughter, Lisa Marie, and Elvis's grandchildren. Other listed auction items, all of which were authenticated by the estate, included Presley's first driver's license from 1952, a custom watch bearing the Star of David design, a jacket worn in the 1964 film Viva Las Vegas, and 
an autographed 78 RPM copy of his debut Sun Records single, That's All Right. Another item, of course, was the Leak family's one-off acetate of my happiness. Bidding started at $50,000, and it ballooned from there, climbing into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and ultimately selling for $300,000. No name of the buyer was included or disclosed, but the transaction was successful. The buyer didn't even pick it up in person. So who was he? I mean, of course, you already know, but let's get into that next part of the story. The no-name buyer has not seen as many figures as tireless or experimental as Jack White. Since he first burst onto the scene in 1997 as one half of the White Stripes, the songwriter has always done things differently. More so than most, White seems dedicated to the inner workings of music production, which is perhaps what led him to form his own record label, Third Man Records. That's from a recent article, like really recent, from Far Out Magazine. At the time, in 2015, Billboard was looking to interview White, head of Third Man Records, half the duo of White Stripes, part of the Tours, the Dead Weather, and all-around vinyl connoisseur. Editor-in-chief Joe Levy went to Memphis to meet White, but was instead greeted by a mysterious man with a black suitcase and instructions to hurry to meet White three hours across the state in Nashville. The briefcase was locked, and the only key was already in Nashville. Rumor has it, Levy had to handcuff it to his wrist, too, but that's unsubstantiated. That's going off of memory from my recent trip to Nashville and tour of Third Man Records, so I might be off there. Levy was given strict instructions. Drive to Nashville, go straight there, don't stop anywhere along the way, and Levy, by the way, make haste. In Nashville, White had called an all-hands-on-deck meeting. Everybody at Third Man Records was there all curious and completely unsure what was going on and what this was all about. Levy, too, was completely clueless. He had no clue what was going on. He had no clue what was in the briefcase, why he had this locked suitcase, and why it was such a big deal. Upon his arrival in Nashville at Third Man Records, Levy brought the suitcase in and was kind of surprised to see everybody there. He handed the case over to White in the Third Man Records headquarters lounge, which, of course, has a record player in it. No surprise, right? White pulled out a key, opened up the case, and carefully pulled out this record. And he placed it on the turntable. He didn't even say a word. Nothing. Said nothing at the meeting. Just played side A, moved the needle, flipped it over, played side B, and let it sit for a second. Then he let everyone in on the secret. This was none other than my happiness, backed with That's When Your Heartache Begins, the first ever record pressed by Elvis Presley and the only one in existence. His words were as follows. This is the first recording ever made by Elvis Presley. On Record Store Day, Third Man Records will issue this on vinyl. Not only had Jack White purchased the only copy of Elvis's first recording, he also secured the rights to reissue it. I did forget one thing. Um, I wanted to look up that Elvis record and see what it's going for on Discogs. So this is completely impromptu, um, not scripted, not planned out, not bullet pointed, nothing like that. Let's see. Third Man Records, My Happiness, That's When Your Heartache Begins is what I'm looking for. There are apparently 11 versions, and you can pick up a copy right now for just $7, which is um, quite a bit less than I anticipated. Oh, hi, Millie. Um, I'm going to link that down in the description, and you can check that out. Get yourself a copy of this kind of cool record. Uh, I, I kind of wouldn't mind a copy myself, so I might have to look into that. The No Name Experiment. Remember that Far Out magazine quote from earlier? Well, here's another. Jack White has, quote, used his musical career as a vehicle for interesting, diverse, and often strange experiments, both within his music and in its physical publication. Elvis took a different approach to recording his first album. 
Radiohead stepped out of tradition with their 2007 release in Rainbows, giving it away to the world through the first ever pay what you want for it model. And Jack White has brought back direct live recording straight to acetate with his Live at the Blue Room series. And he's done it again in 2024. Jack White just released No Name and has completely flipped release strategy upside down by not announcing it and just giving away secret copies with no label and nothing on the sleeve to in-store purchases on one specific day at Third Man Records a few weeks back. So far, that strategy has paid off, and it's led to one of my favorite albums of the year. And not just that, it's cracked the top 10 as well. All of that aside, if you happen to be in Nashville, I absolutely strongly recommend reserving a spot for the Third Man Records tour. It will sell out, so make sure you book your reservation. Pieces of this story were pulled from the tour that I took back in June. You can dig more into my tour and my trip to Nashville and some of the records that I picked up and more in the next video. I'm Andy. This is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel. This little gal is Millie. This has been an episode of Poetic Wax, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Is that right, Millie?